Hi everyone, welcome to Netgate Chemistry. So, in the previous video, we discussed about the conductance topic, okay, in detail. So, today before starting, I want to tell you that uh, this series of electrochemistry is going to cover all the relative topics of your CSIR Net, GATE and IIT CHAM, right? And after this, I am also going to upload the previous questions related to all the playlists which I have uploaded. Uh, if you want to uh, get your hands on a particular book for electrochemistry, I would rather ask you to uh, just go through the videos first, right? And if you find time, then you can go ahead with Puri Sharma and Pathania. Also, you can look for in the KL Kapoor, but I would suggest just go through all the videos and then just solve your previous year questions first by yourself. And if you are not able to do some of the questions, then go ahead and watch the playlist on uh, the previous year questions of your electrochemistry. And uh, same goes for every topic which I have covered, right? So I have decided from uh, from now onwards whichever topic i'm going to cover i'll also tell you about the uh, books which you can refer to and i'll also upload the previous year questions accordingly so that you can uh, first solve by yourself and then recheck uh, by going into the playlist and uh, solving the questions from there also right so you can get an idea of how to approach the questions right so from now uh, today we are going to start uh, with these two formulas which i have written here one decimeter cube is equals to thousand centimeter cube and one decimeter cube is equals to one upon thousand meter cube now these formulas are going to be very useful in the conversions because uh, whenever we are using molarity and normality we are dealing with mole per liter right mole per liter uh, so we always have to uh, convert that liter into either into centimeters or in meters, right? So these conversions come in very handy to you. So uh, just note down these two formulas, okay? So the next topic is relation between lambda m and lambda e q. It's very easy, see? lambda eq is equals to kappa by n right and n can be written as m into n factor or z factor now you know what is n factor or z factor if you have uh, if you don't know about it you can go ahead and watch the videos on general concepts of physical chemistry right so m into z factor so lambda eq will be equal to lambda m upon n because kappa upon m is your lambda m n or your z factor whatever you call it okay so from here we get if i designate by n so lambda eq will be equal to n into lambda eq sorry lambda m is equals to lambda m is equals to n into lambda eq okay this is also a very important relation now the next topic which we are going to study is your variation of conductivity now here i am talking about both lambda m as well as lambda eq molar as well as equivalent conductivity sorry conductance with concentration okay so now we are going to study about this so if we plot a graph between your conductivity it could be your lambda m or lambda eq sorry conductance lambda m or lambda eq versus root of concentration root c so for strong electrolytes we get a graph like this okay and for weak electrolytes we get a graph like this okay so this is for your weak electrolytes
and this is for your strong electrolytes right this is the observation so first we are going to study about the strong electrolytes see in case of strong electrolytes what we have got lambda versus root c we have, we have got this type of a graph okay so what happens as we are increasing the concentration the value of conductance is decreasing or you can say it vice versa that if we are diluting the solution right if we are going this way we are diluting the solution the conductance is increasing naturally it will increase because the ions will tend to move faster due to dilutions okay more the more concentrated the solution is more the ions will be closer to each other and they will be hindered their movement will be hindered so as we go on diluting the solution the uh, movement of these ions in the solution increases and so do the conductance right so we get this type of a graph now if we are going to take a solution of kcl or nacl when i'm taking this type of solution these are both uni univalent solutions okay these are uni univalent ions so if i'm taking solution of these ions uni univalent ions that is your k positive cl negative this is also univalent okay and this is also univalent so i get a graph like this if i take k2so4 or your bacl2 that is uni bivalent right these are uni bivalent so i'll get a graph like this okay this is also a straight line right this is for uni bivalent if i take graph of bi bivalent for example NiSO4 so i'll get a graph like this okay i think i have not i have not drawn it properly actually we get three lines like this 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 and this right like this so you can make up for three these three lines like this okay so we get a graph like this so as the valency of ions is increasing okay the falling of your conductance is more this we can see here okay as the valency is increasing right here was uni univalent here is uni bivalent and here is your bi bivalent as we are increasing the valency the fall in your lambda value your lambda value fall is getting more right see the slope is here less steeper becomes more steep and more steep here so as we are increasing the valency the fall in your lambda value is also increasing so this is a conclusion for your strong electrolytes right so now we have a law which explains um, uh, this a uh, strong electrolyte behavior which is known as your coleridge law so here what you can observe if we take just one simple solution i don't know whether it is univalent bivalent or bi bivalent any type of a strong electrolytic solution so what i can see is if i plot a graph like this if i extrapolate this curve okay like this then here i get a value of conductance okay this is designated by lambda m not or lambda eq not whatever it is so this is your infinite dilution case okay this is your conductance at infinite dilution
okay if i extrapolate this curve and it meets at this y axis then we get a value of your lambda that is your conductance and this conductance value is your conductance at infinite dilution that is for very very dilute solutions we get a value of conductance known as conductance at infinite dilution now what uh, coleridge law says the law says that at infinite dilution when dissociation is complete so i'll dictate it at infinite dilution when your uh, dilute dissociation is complete each ion makes its definite contribution towards molar or your equivalent conductance of electrolyte that is what it wants to say that at infinite dilution molar conductance for any electrolyte will be given by the sum of contribution of ions for example uh, i want to find out uh, see i have got the value lambda m not okay the molar conductance at infinite dilution for a given solution so this will be equal to molar conductance due to cations present in that solution at infinite dilution this not represent at infinite dilution plus the molar condu conductance due to the anions at infinite dilution this is the statement of coleridge law that is your net conductance at the time of infinite dilution is the sum of your conductances due to cations and anions present in that solution this is the statement of your coleridge law so i think the video is going to be very lengthy if i continue from here onwards so i think for now um, that's it for this video in the next video we are going to cover transport number hit off method um, and the law of independent migration of ions and some of the questions uh, related to coleridge law so that's it for this video thank you so much for watching